So you're a maker and you want to get started with 3D modeling and 3D design, but you have no idea where to start and everyone's telling you different things and you just want to know the truth of it all. Well, let me tell you my experience and hopefully that will help guide you where to start for 3D modeling for makers. Now, considering you're asking yourself this question, I'm going to guess that you're pretty new to the 3D realm. So I've got to let you know that there's actually two very different ways of creating things in the 3D space. One is called NURBS modeling, also known as non-uniform rationale B-splines. This is very complicated maths to create the objects through basically equations. It's really quite incredible stuff. And then the other one is polygon modeling, also known as mesh modeling. This deals with vertices, corners, edges, and faces to create a model as a whole. So those are the two sort of kingpins of 3D modeling. They both have some incredible pros and cons to one another, but that's the number one mindset to keep yourself in. So in an ideal world, both of these would be merged together into one program and that there would be the incredible workflow that you want to learn. Unfortunately, that is not where we are. In fact, there is sort of the opposite of where we are. There's this big rift that there is sort of this precision modeling that needs to be done with nerves. And then there's artistic modeling that needs to be done with polygons. And the truth is that neither of them are correct. They can both do each other's work just as well, sometimes even better than one another, depending on the situation. Now, let's talk a little bit more about this. So nerves-based modeling, you need to tell it all the rules, the mathematics, the equations to go and create the things. And then it sort of just catches you and just creates the things sort of for you. Now it's technically not real because it's all just maths. So you need to eventually turn this into a real thing. For instance, in 3D modeling, you need to export this as a 3MF or an STL. That actually turns it into a polygon. That sort of, it, it sort of hurts your head a bit to go, so wait, I'm doing it, modeling it in this way, and then you're gonna turn it into that anyway. And then here's the catch all that, once you have that, let's say you've lost your file of making this or you've got another STL online, if you want to actually turn that into something that was nerves based, well, you now need to convert it. And there is always precision lost in that converting. There have been leaps and bounds in technology, especially in Fusion 360 to actually change that back that way. But that's just something that I've got to keep you sort of in your head that sometimes things don't work out how you expect. Now let's switch on over to polygon modeling, which is, in my opinion, sort of the kingpin of all, because you can do anything in here. And with the developments of Blender, which is completely free by the way, oh my goodness, things are getting very interesting. I can now do completely parametric modeling in there. Unfortunately, it's not nerves based yet. And I'm hoping that one day nerves will come to there. But you do need to keep in mind about the rules of mesh. Faces have a front face and a back face. Edges and vertices need to not really cross each other and need to sort of be laid out nicely. How do you have two edges crossing each other in the real world, you don't. So that breaks things in that environment. You don't have problems like that in a nerves environment because the maths is there to catch you. So which one is better? There is no one that's better. That's a ridiculous way of thinking of the 3D space. Unfortunately, that is sort of the mindset that a whole bunch of the entirety of the internet is sort of stuck in. Because in the past, this was very much the precision world, and this was very much the artistic world, and they did not want to interact with one another. That is no longer the case, though. With visual effects especially, there's been a whole bunch of procedural work being done. And when it comes to procedural work, you need a lot of precision sometimes. So there's been this gray area that's starting to come out. So let's answer that question then. Where should you start? I'll give you my absolute honest answer. If I could go back to seven years ago where I first sort of started really getting into being a maker, if I could tell myself, hey, look, 
don't learn these other five programs that you know. Yes, I've spent way too much time learning so many programs and I could just tell myself one program to go with. I would go with Blender. Now, that is not discrediting any of the parametric programs out there like FreeCAD, OpenSCAD, Fusion 360, Rhino, and all of that. Just that, oh my goodness me, the power of Blender is mind boggling. Now, there is a lovely catch right there. It's not going to be easy. If you're looking for something that's going to hold your hand so you can make some nice, pretty round edges, go and make your life simple. Go and get yourself FreeCAD. Go and get maybe OpenSCAD. I haven't got much experience in OpenSCAD or Fusion 360, and then you can round any edge you want. Go for it there. But if you want to truly be sort of unlimited in the way of rendering out however you want, animating it however you want, dealing with STL straight off the internet, being able to create anything really, and soon parametrically in any way you want with add-ons like CAD Sketcher as well as geometry nodes and using the modifiers, well, you're pretty much getting into a full parametric workflow within the mesh environment and sort of just going, you know what, I'm not going to rely completely on the maths of this to help me along. Now, by no means am I discrediting NURBS modeling. It is incredible and I wish so badly that that was inside of Blender and it actually worked nicely. But the truth of it all is that kernel, the code to do all of that maths, has taken 25 years to get to this point and they're still working on it. No wonder they don't want to give it to an open source free program. Like that is a lot of hard time and labor gone into this. So that's what I've got to say to you. If you're looking to make money from things, just be aware that a lot of these nerves based CAD programs, well, you usually can't go above making a thousand bucks a year from them. So you're going to have to pay for it. If you don't mind paying, go for it. Absolutely love it. Just make sure that you spend the time and effort to really truly understand whichever program it is that you're going to go into. Now, when it comes to mesh modeling, Blender, wow, wow, wow. You're going to be able to get a lot out of that. Trust me, I'm three years into this learning and I still feel like I'm only scratching the surface. And then there's a whole nother area that I haven't even touched yet. It is incredible stuff. So to go forward from here, if you're looking for a free nerve space workflow, there is two that I know of, which is plasticity, which is free for now. And then once it goes out into its first release, it will be paid, but it will be a one-time payment, not this whole subscription thing. And that is linked down in the description. If you want a free way of doing it, I also have a short little free CAD course. That's also linked down in the description. Just be aware that free CAD also has its problems. You can go and see that video down there. If you're looking to learn Blender, then you can go and check out my gigantic courses. And by the way, I really am not being biased here. I just want to tell you my honest opinion. So yes, I have my courses, my paid course and all of that, but I really want to help the maker community. And that's why I'm making this video to try and help you out. So there's an entire free course to, to learn everything you need that is linked down in the description. If you want to learn through actual 3D printing projects, I have my paid course that's also down in the description, but there's no need to. I have my entire free course. Just be aware that you only make one tiny little model in that. And that's pretty much all I've got to say. I wish you the absolute best of luck going into your 3D journey. There is so much ahead and just be creative. That's the number one thing. Find what it is that you want to make and just get making. A huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are absolutely awesome. And without you, I truly would not have been able to make Maker Tales. A big thank you to my VIP makers. That is Jem Oskanak and David Fernandez. And if you're enjoying what I'm making here, I would love to see you there too. If you think I deserve your support. Thank you for watching. Keep making and let the quest continue.